when working with scan data for misfires, the first thing you're going to do is check for diagnostic trouble codes. Now, in this section, we're going to go a little heavier into fuel control because bad fuel control, of course, can cause misfires. And then you have all the other ignition menus to go to. If you have a P0300, it just tells you that the misfire was detected by the PCM, but the cylinder could not be identified. And here we have the chart that you've seen many times, P0301 through 308 tells us which cylinder, a P0305, for example, tells us that it's cylinder number five that has the misfires. If you have a misfire code and it points to a specific cylinder, you can start there. Or you can continue to use your scan tool and look at the misfire counters. The misfire counters are going to show you which cylinders or cylinder are firing, misfiring. Now, here is a typical scan data screen for misfire counters on a NEON. Not all Chrysler cars or trucks are going to display misfire data. Here's an example of the scan data for misfires from a 2006 Chrysler. They all look different. Any number in the misfire indicates that that cylinder is misfiring. In this case, we have zeros as an example, and there are no misfires. But if their numbers were in there, it would tell us how many misfires per cylinders we're having. And the zeros, of course, indicate there are no misfires. So as you look at these misfire screens, if your vehicle has them, be sure you know which cylinders are misfiring and when they are not misfiring. Set up the scan tool to read engine data after you have determined which cylinders are misfiring. Start the engine and allow it to warm up. You can begin with the oxygen sensors and ensure that they are working normally. Go ahead and start with the oxygen sensors heaters. Here we've grafted a heater. We've actually gra grafted the pre and post heaters. The top one in the red box is showing us that, yeah, we have about an 80 one percent duty cycle pulse with modulated heater so we are heating up the front O2 and the bottom one there shows we're at a hundred percent they always heat up the they add extra heater activity to the rear the oxygen sensor heater should be at high percentages when the engine is cold and then you want to look at the activity rate of the oxygen sensors and we'll show you some activity here and you can see they are crossing after you know they're crossing, go ahead and look at long-term fuel trim to see if it has made a correction. Now, we have our own version of long-term fuel trim specifications. We have given this a lot of thought. Perfect is long-term fuel trim must be under plus or minus 5%. And then you have that ambiguity between 5% and 10%. On some old high mileage vehicles, 8, 9, 10% really doesn't mean that much. But anything over 10%, we consider that that needs diagnosing, whether it be minus, meaning that it's running rich, the PCM subtracting fuel, and or plus that it's running lean and the PCM is adding fuel. Now everyone does not agree with our strict and stringent specifications for long-term fuel trim. You can use what you use or you can use ours. Fuel trim may make adjustments for fuel delivery and it's all based off the oxygen sensor signal and in this case you can see we have fuel trims of 14 and 15 percent. Now when the O2s are stuck lean, check for a major fuel delivery problem or a vacuum leak. In this case, they're not crossing. They're always staying low. If they're always staying high and they're not crossing, when the O2s are stuck rich, go ahead and check for major fuel delivery problems and high fuel pressure. The rear oxygen sensor should move very little, 
short-term fuel trim should be between minus 10 and plus 10, and that's constantly moving to correct for all the little minor uh, fuel control problems that you see on a normal running engine. If the short-term percentages are higher than plus 10 percent or minus 10 percent, it indicates the engine is running too lean or too rich. In the case of higher than plus 10 percent, that means the engine's running too lean and the PCM's commanding additional fuel. So you would look for lean conditions. If short-term percentages are lower than that minus 10 percent, it indicates the engine is running too rich and the PCM is commanding less fuel to compensate. Long-term fuel trim, as we said, should be within minus 10 percent to plus 10 percent. And we said those perfect running engines, plus or minus 5 percent. If the long-term percentages are higher than plus 10 percent, the engine is running too lean and the PCM is commanding additional fuel to compensate. And of course, if, it's, if the percentages are over minus 10 percent, the engine is running too rich and the PCM is making a correction by commanding less fuel. Now this is an example of fuel trim using the e-scan scan tool. Now if you want any information on this scan tool, please call the number on your screen. There it says 845-628-6928. This scan tool recently became available to us. They loaned us one to do some research with. We're finding that it's a very nice scan tool. On this screen we're showing you here, the squares on the screen are actually fuel cells. On the left we have absolute throttle position and on the bottom we have RPM. Now you can see there's some green squares in the one on the left. That means on this example this engine has a bank one fuel trim but not a bank two. And on this example, we have a bank one and a bank two. And you can see that on this particular car, all the fuel trims in all the fuel cells are well within normal. On the one on the left, there's an eight in there at 3,000 to 3,500 at 35 to 30 to 40 percent throttle. But I wouldn't worry about that. These are two perfect banks. This Chrysler vehicle has good fuel trim, and when we look at the TP ranges on the chart and the fuel trims, green is good. You can see underneath the, the words there, green is good. Yellow is we're having a problem. Orange is a little greater problem. Red is something's bad. Go fix it. The chart is green on these, and that means it ranged from 0 to 8, like I told you. Look at the chart that we just showed you, the color codes to help you diagnose per fuel trim cell. This is a great diagnostic tool. Now with the throttle position at 0 to 70 percent, that's the orange ones we're looking at, 0 to 70 on the left hand side there, and we're off idle. You can see as we go across from left to right, we're off idle. The possible causes for this problem are vacuum leaks at idle and a sensor problem. Now when you say sensor problem, we're actually thinking load sensors. And on a Chrysler, that would be a map sensor and or the crankshaft position sensor. Look how the orange turns into the green. We have good fuel control under heavy throttle and at higher RPMs. But we have bad fuel control at idle and lower throttle openings. Notice how the grid turns green at the 80 percent to 90 percent throttle. And that's indicating that, hey, we got good fuel control. Now, the conclusion here is this. The fuel pump, fuel filters, the injectors, the electrical fuel control circuits are good because we're getting good control at higher throttle openings and RPM. So as we said, we'd go look at a load sensor or a vacuum leak. Now here's one with an actual customer complaint that said there was no power, a lack of power. At 100 percent throttle, that means when you whack the throttle, we go up to 27 uh, percent fuel control on the left bank, the bank one, 
and 30% on bank two over there on the right. Now, the fix is that we replace the fuel pump and the filter. And that it, it's all laid out there for you. At lower throttle openings and lower RPM, we had good fuel control. When fuel demand increased, we had bad fuel control, except there in the center. And that's an anomaly, and we can't explain that. But then when we went under heavy load, we just did not have enough fuel. So we look for fuel problems. In this case, it ended up being poor fuel pressure and volume pressure caused by the pump, volume caused by the filter. Now, key on engine off, the MAP sensor should read barometric pressure. Look at the MAP vacuum and the barrel pressure readings on your scan tool display. Use an altitude versus voltage chart to determine what the MAP sensor should read at your altitude. Don't forget that MAPs have to be corrected as you go higher in the mountains. If the MAP reads incorrectly, you must test the MAP sensor and make any repairs before continuing. A MAP that measures the wrong barometric pressure can cause incorrect PCM calculations. At idle, the MAP should read engine vacuum. And here's the example. Barrel, key on engine off, the MAP read 29.91. Minus MAP vacuum at idle, 9.63 equals 20.28 inches of vacuum. That's what our vacuum gauge should read. If you connect a vacuum gauge to this engine, that's what the reading should be. So use a vacuum versus voltage chart to determine what the map should read. A map that does not agree with the vacuum gauge indicates a map problem. And don't forget, make sure that you subtract barrel from map for the correct vacuum reading. Special note, make sure that the MAP sensor is seeing full manifold vacuum. When you test it electrically and it tests OK, go ahead and disconnect the MAP sensor vacuum hose from its source and measure it right there and make sure it's not carbon in the nipple. Another note, misfires can cause manifold vacuum to be lower than normal even when the MAP sensor is good. So here, if you have misfires and you're trying to test a MAP sensor versus vacuum, you're going to see problems. So be aware that a misfire is going to cause manifold vacuum to be lower than normal, and the MAP sensor should reflect that. And then when you do your math, your vacuum gauge should reflect that. Before condemning a MAP sensor, make sure that you are aware that there's no vacuum leaks or that the EGR is not leaking. Either one of those can affect MAP sensor readings. Closed throttle. TPS must, must match specifications. After the map, go on and move to the TPS. Higher than normal TPS voltages could indicate the throttle stop screw has been adjusted by someone, and that's to compensate for a dirty throttle bore. So if you find that, look in the throttle bore, see if it needs to be clean. Normal injector pulse width at idle should be 3, 3 milliseconds or so. On this vehicle, a 2.5 milliseconds indicates the PCM is subtracting fuel, and a 5.5 milliseconds indicates the PCM is adding fuel. So that's your specifications, 2.5 to 5.5, 3, 3 being perfect almost. Use this data with long-term fuel trim and the oxygen sensors to determine a rich or lean conditions. Look at the data, compare it to each other, compare it to specs, and try to determine, is this, running, is this engine running consistently rich or consistently lean? When the injector pulse width is high and long-term fuel trim is normal, look for data that isn't correct, causing the PCM to make a wrong decision. What we see here in this example is the computer's adding fuel, but long-term's normal look for something confusing the PCM. It's making wrong decisions. Look at it inputs. When injector pulse width is low and long-term fuel trim is normal, look for data once again that isn't correct, causing the PCM once again to make a wrong decision. Now, when injector pulse width is high and long-term fuel trim is high, you want to go to fuel system testing and vacuum leak testing. So what we have here 
is yes, injector pulse width is higher than normal, but the computer's calling for it. You want to go to see why the fuel system isn't delivering enough fuel, or do we have a vacuum leak giving too much air? Now, study scan data and misfire counters to get a direction in which to take your diagnostics. You will now be returned to the test menu selection and go ahead and make a selection that matches your test results so you can continue testing.